looking back on this long and uh, very accomplished career of bold climbing, does one instance stand out as the most scared you've ever been or the worst fall you've ever taken? Hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I mean, uh, actually, like, uh, um, I remember, like, my, my my daughter having an accident when she was very young, um, which I, w I won't go into, but I bring it up because it suddenly made me realize that all the times I'd been scared in climbing was actually not that scared and that nothing mm -hmm. even came close to that level of fear. That was like another level that was actually properly traumatic. But in sure. so in climbing, I don't think I've experienced anything, anything like that, even though I have felt like I was about to die in climbing. Like I, I got, I was in an avalanche on Ben Nevis when I was a teenager. Hmm. Um, we were, we ended up not where we wanted to be on the, the mountain because of various things and ended up below this cornice, which my partner was trying to dig through and the whole cornice room collapsed. And he was already in his hole, so it just kind of pushed him into his hole, but it, it just took me off backwards and then it avalanched the gully below. So wow. I got carried a thousand feet down the gully and it avalanched the gully. And it, it went over this two pitch ice climb. Um, so like I remember going down the gully and thinking, if I don't get out of this by the time we go over the, that ice climb, then I'm toast. Um, and it, I just always remember the feeling of the heavy weight of avalanche debris as we went over the edge of it, just like floating away from me. <laughs> oh my God. And then just being like, right, well, that's it. Like, I hope it's quick. Um, but it, the, the, it was such a soft snow avalanche. And I think I kind of bounced at the right point on the, on this kind of easy angled ice so that I didn't kind of smack into the bottom of it. And I just carried on down the gully. And I was also very lucky that I wasn't quite buried. I'd half my face in one hand was sticking out. So I dug myself out. So I got away with that one, but for most of it, I was like, well, I'm, a, I'm about to die, which was scary, but it's, it's, it's kind of comforting in a way that it wasn't that scary, certainly not compared to my latest experience with my daughter. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Yeah, it sounds terrifying. <laughs> Often accidents in climbing or, or scrapes in climbing are, are not, it's, it's the anticipation that's scary, but the, when, when the thing actually happens, it all happens very quickly. And often you move beyond fear um, and you just you just start to react to the situation instinctively and, and that's usually a good thing. Uh, once when I was climbing at Dumbarton, uh, so <laughs> I should explain this. So when I, when I was learning to lead, one of the issues I had was just not knowing the difference between a good placement for a nut or a cam and a, and a poor placement. So everything just felt like soloing. Right. So, you know, I could, I, I was climbing, trying to climb these very easy trad routes and, and often backing off them or just, just not feeling like confident enough to even try them for that reason, even though I was, my climbing standard physically was quite high. And then it, it, it kind of clicked. I kind of reached a level where I, I, I kind of knew what was a good nut. And so I did my first E1, E2, E3 and E4 in the same day. Um, wow. And then I immediately tried, started to try more E4s, uh, but I just didn't have that roundedness of as a leader. So I didn't have the judgment. So I remember starting up another E4 with my wife, Claire, belaying, and um, it was really dirty and it was also a really humid day. And I, I climbed through most of the, the climbing. I was almost at the finishing ledge, but it was, it, was, it was so dirty. It was just all the holes were covered in wet moss. And I was getting oh pumped God. and it all just unraveled. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't climb down. I couldn't climb up and I was just stuck. And I was trying to kind of climb down, trying to climb up. It was getting worse and worse. And my wife, Claire, was crying, feeling me. And I had, I had a cam that was really low in the pitch. And then I had a, some micro wires higher up. And I was saying to Claire, like, these micro wires are rubbish. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And tried to climb up and then I just remember like finally my fingers just uncurled. All right, y'all, just a quick minute here to shout out today's sponsor, which is Scarpa. Oh, I'm so psyched. My very first pair of climbing shoes and approach shoes were by Scarpa and I have loved them ever since. I'm so grateful that they're supporting the show here 
Y'all, whether you are smearing granite like Amity Warm, towing into steep pockets like Maddie Hong, bouncing from volume to volume like Nathaniel Coleman, or tossing crazy heel hooks like Alex Puccio, Scarpa has got you. They have been making the best footwear for peak performance as well as sustainability since 1938. They are here to take care of your adventures. You can shop the entire collection at scarpa.com. Scarpa, no place too far. Let's get back to the video. I came off, turned upside down, and I just remember seeing these buildings that are in the distance and the bottom just upside down, and um, just hearing all the wires all coming out. Oh no! Um, and then Claire, Claire uh, had been forced to watch the movie Hard Grit, and you know if you've ever seen that movie in the intro, um, when a French climber is falling off Gaia in the Peak District, and it's Belair just jumps down the hillside and takes in a load of rope. So Claire instinctively did that. Amazing. So this cam that was like well below yeah. halfway, like took me in. So as I kind of swung in and the rope came tight, the, the grass just took my hat off. <laughs> oh so my I like God. took this 50 foot head first and it was literally like an inch above the ground. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that, that felt quite intense. But it's funny, it's like, again, it, I, I kind of went past fear. The fear was all in the anticipation. And right. then once I was actually getting to the point where I was falling off, I, I went past that. And um, so when I when I kind of I turned myself round and stood up and I just started laughing, like adrenaline kind of laugh, and Claire started crying. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it was, it was more traumatic for her than for you, similar to when your daughter had her yeah. accident. Oh, my God, man. What what tends to be the most effective for you and, and that you found for other climbers as well when dealing with some of that fear of uh, falling? Hmm. Yeah, I, well, right now I'm going back to uh, a training approach, if you like, that I started back when I was at Dumbarton Rock as a relative novice, um, where I, I just made a decision to do to do at least one thing that was just out of my comfort zone every single time that I climbed. It didn't need to be much or very sustained and, and overwhelming yourself is counterproductive very, very quickly. Uh, but it just, just something so that I didn't get used to the feeling that um, of discomfort being uh, something bad to be avoided, that that was normal and I'd have to, I'd have to adapt to it. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that again right now. So, like, when I was doing it the first time round, I was doing a lot of um, high ball boulders that were really more than high balls, more like short solos where, mm -hmm. you know, you're above a rocky landing and you're like, you know, 20 feet above a rocky landing. You can't really get away with falling. You're going to you're going to break bones. Um, so you go up to a high point and that's where you last came down. And then I would just try and go a move higher. But even if I couldn't go a move higher, just staying at the high point for longer. And then you would realize that when you reach the high point at first, you feel very nervous and tense and your vision is very narrowed and you can't see the holes around you and you feel very stressed. But then if you just stay there, I would find that after a couple of minutes, I would actually start to relax and be like, actually, I can stay here. I can I can be here for a few minutes and not having the same pressure that I need to start down climbing immediately. And then you realize, oh, I didn't see that hold and oh, the, the sequence starts to emerge in front of you and you can see the next move. And so sometimes the the thing I would do to be out of my comfort zone would just be to stay at the high point for longer and then I would down climb and then I'd take a rest and then I'd go back up and then the next time I would just reach and touch the next hold or maybe I would do the next move or you would just do as much as you could. You would just do something that was a, a little bit more than you really were comfortable with. But without actually putting yourself in real danger, I would never like start sketching through a move. You know, that that would be when you're moving into error, where it becomes kind of productive. You sketch around, you will fall, <laughs> and then you hurt yourself, and then you'll lose all that confidence very quickly. So you have to be very careful not to exceed the limits of of your your skill level.